Starting off, we have sophomore band member Riley Bolin joining Kyla Kinman in the auditorium. Hello, Chargers. Today's installment of Special Talent is with Riley Bolin, a sophomore here at Pike Central. She's a member of concert band, winter percussion, pep band, and marching band. Riley stepped into the world of music at a young age, which led to her passion for piano she has today. Well, I started taking piano lessons since I was in like first grade, but it wasn't until like three years ago I actually enjoyed playing it because I discovered that I like playing classical music more than like the little songs they have in the books they give you. And so that's how I kind of got started with it. Piano and French horn are my main two instruments. And then the other ones I'm fairly good at are flute, oboe, trumpet, saxophone. And the ones I'm kind of good at, I just don't like playing, are bassoon and trombone. And outside of school, I play piano for our youth band and sometimes at our church service on Sunday. So, what is your favorite instrument to play? Um, probably the piano, because that's the one I've been playing for the most time, and I have the most experience with it, but I also like French horn, too. is probably the one I went to contest for this year. It was uh, Debussy's Arabesques and I just like it a lot because I learned it. It took me a long time to learn and I finally got it and then I had to memorize it all and then it, but it finally paid off when I went to state and then I got gold but I don't have to play it again but it was a really fun piece. If you're someone that wants to like play piano in the future I think you definitely should like you have to get piano lessons and stuff. It's like a really hard instrument to learn on your own instead of having someone teach you, but it does pay off and it's my favorite instrument to play and it's really fun. So I think that if you want to do it, you should do it. Even if you're like a little bit older and still like start out doing the basic stuff, that doesn't really matter. It just matters if you're consistent and want to keep playing it. But yeah, I think it's, very good thing to do. For PC Broadcasting, I'm Kyla Kinman. Riley's just an incredible piano player. I've seen her play multiple times. I really wish I could get back into piano. I mean, it seems like it's not really that hard, but if you watch him play, it takes a lot of skill. Coming up next, Raven Shots will be reviewing recent movies and TV shows. Hello everyone, I'm Raven Shots, and for today's segment, I'm going to be reviewing some movie series and TV series. Our first movie, a new release, came out this year movie called Cocaine Bear. Um, our description for that is, after a 500 pound bear consumes a significant amount of cocaine and embarks on a drug-fueled rampage in a centric gathering of cops, criminals, tourists, and, tinger, and teenagers, a symbol in a Georgia forest. This movie was not what I thought it was going to be at all. It was a fairly over-dramatized movie of an actual event, in my opinion, which I didn't really like. I wish they would have maybe kept it more like realistic um, rather than as over-dramatized as it was. And if they wanted it to be more horror, um, then they should have gone for more horror rather than comedy horror. Um, overall, this is probably not a movie I will ever watch again, and I honestly give it a 1.5 of 5 popcorn bags. The next is The Zookeeper's Wife. When the Nazis invade Poland, Warsaw Zoo caretakers work with the underground resistance to save Jews from the horrors of the Third Reich. If you are someone who likes history and learning about things that happened during certain wars, then this is, a, then this is the movie for you. 
I really liked how it wasn't really a movie that focused just on the saving of the Jews, but also everything that happened in the town of Warsaw. This is a movie I will definitely be watching again, 4 out of 5 popcorn bats. The next is another new release for Netflix. Um, it is Wednesday. While attending Nevermore Academy, Wednesday Adams attempts to master her emerging psychic ability for a killing spree and solve the mystery that embroided, embroiled her parents 25 years ago. This is honestly a really fun series to watch. I'm sure some may think differently with the animated Adams family having not come out too long ago, but I liked having a show that focuses on just one of the Adams family members rather than the Adams family as a whole. It was fun watching Wednesday make friends and also work on solving the case. This is definitely a series I'm watching again and can't wait for season two of. 3.5 out of 5. Next is Twister. This is an older movie, um, much older than a lot of the movies that in TV series I've talked about. During the approach of the most powerful storm in decades, university professor Dr. Jill Harding, played by Helen Hunt, and an unfunded team of students prepare the prototype for Dorothy, a groundbreaking tornado data gathering device conceived by her estranged husband, Bill, played by Bill Paxton. When Harding tells Bill that Dorothy is ready for testing and that their privately funded rival, Dr. Jones Miller, played by Carrie Ells, was stolen, the idea has stolen the idea and built his own. Bill joins the team for one last mission. If you like movies with a little bit of drama, but really good storm CGI, then this is the movie for you. It's a really good movie despite having been filmed in, 19, in 1996 and doesn't take long to get straight into the action. My favorite thing about this movie is how the storms are kept realistic. I definitely plan on watching this movie many more times. And a little fun fact is this movie is what led to the creation of Storm Chasing. I give it a 4 out of 4.5 of 5 popcorn bags. And last is All of Us Are Dead. This is a Korean Netflix show where students stuck in their high school during a zombie apocalypse must, esca must escape and get to safety before their town is blown up. I really like this show. It really different, differentiated from other zombie apocalypse movies and shows. I like how there could be people who were infected but still had control over themselves as if though they were still human. All of Us Are Dead also has a webcomic that is based off of it, and from what I have read so far, it's fairly good. This is a show that I'm really hoping gets a season two and that I am definitely going to watch again. 4.5 of 5 popcorn backs. I hope that you will go and watch some of these. Maybe tell me um, what your thoughts are and what you would have rated these. And now onto the next segment. I'm really glad that Raven did this segment. I'm always looking for new TV shows and movies, and it's really great to see how my peers react to some yeah, of the shows. Yeah, I am shows. as well. I am as well. Charger sports are springing up. Here's Gabe Hitton with the Sports Spotlight featuring baseball. Today we're back with another week of sports review, and today we are doing baseball. So I'm here with one of the coaches of Pike Central High School's varsity baseball team, Mr. Bo Daves. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little about yourself. Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Officer Bo Daves. Um, I actually graduated from here in 2006. Uh, played a lot of different sports. Um, you know, went to college, played baseball. Uh, came back home. I uh, have a family now. I just had a son about two weeks ago. And uh, I just kind of came back here to teach. I, I've been, this is my fifth year teaching. Um, uh, top four years at Wood Memorial, and then uh, saw a spot open up here and made way back over here. All right. So, we're going to be asking uh, Mr. Daves here some questions about the season and what's his opinion about it. And then at the end, we're kind of just asking some random questions for him. So, first one uh, How do you see this season going? Um, right now, I, I think I feel pretty confident about our team. You know, we, uh, you know, we got a lot of kids with uh, a lot of raw talent. But uh, we're trying to hone that in, uh, get them some, you know, get them some mechanics going, make sure that they are uh, understanding different situations, stuff like that. But I mean, for the most part, I mean, we got a number of kids that can pitch pretty well. We got a number of kids that can hit pretty well. Um, and I think just getting them to come together as a team and you know make sure that they are you know on the same page. You know, I think I think we'll have a lot of success. All right. Uh, what made you decide to coach baseball? Um. You know, I'm not real sure. I think, I, I mean, obviously the, the history of playing and everything probably just led into it, but uh, I do remember back in, I want to say it was like 2015, 
there was a spot available. Uh, this is actually my second time coaching here. Uh, and I, I coached with Josh McDonald here for about three years. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. it. It was really, um, really, I would say coaching led me into teaching because I was before I even started teaching. And uh, it was just, you know, it's, it's cool just kind of teaching kids things and watching them implement those and have success. And I kind of just transitioned into teaching there. Uh, how long have you been coaching? Um, let's see. I guess if you count, uh, you know, when my son played and stuff, or I mean, he still plays, he's only 11, but uh, when he started playing, so probably, probably around eight years, somewhere around there. Nice. Um, did you play baseball when you were in high school? Yes, yeah. I uh, Well, my first two years of high school, I was at Jasper. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then I came back to Pike Central and played two years here. Um, we had a lot of success. Uh, my junior senior year, we had winning records. We almost won the sectional. We kind of just missed out on that, but uh, we were we had a lot of good players back then. Uh, what is your favorite sport? Definitely baseball. Um, baseball, football's up there. I really enjoy football. I played here. Um, I watched all the time, stepped there with it. But uh, baseball is definitely number one for me. Uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Five years. Um, I would say, uh, if not in a teaching capacity, probably a little bit higher, maybe in administration or something like that. But uh, I think it'll be hard for me to get away from coaching at this point. I, like I said, I really I enjoy it. it. It's fun to you know watch you know young people grow and you know, and I feel like almost kind of obligated to pass on that knowledge because there you know remember I played there's just a lot of things I know now that you know I didn't have. To, coach teaching me or a teacher showing me so I, I, I feel like uh, it's almost my responsibility to kind of go out there and do that. Um, what else do you do besides coaching? Uh, besides coaching, um, well I, like I said, I have two sons now. Uh, my wife, uh, I do play, I still play baseball. Um, I'm on a, I play for the Jasper Reds over there. They're like a, a semi-pro team. Um, I am the old guy on the team, but, <laughs> but you know, I give them some knowledge there. Um, I also play on a team based out of Indy. Uh, they travel around. They, we went to Vegas last year. We went to Florida. Um, so I, I do a little bit of that. I also play flag football. Um, we actually start on this coming Sunday. I play uh, slow pitch softball. Really, um, I'm down for about anything. I play a lot of different stuff. I try to stay active. Uh, you know, got to keep that competitive edge going. So, uh, you know, that, I think, and I think in turn, that kind of helps me with coaching. Mm -hmm. um, what was your dream job as a kid? Dream job, I was probably MLB baseball player. I was saying, you know? you're back on me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's that's a pretty common dream. I, I, I think if you don't have that dream when you're a kid, you're, you're shooting too low. Mm -hmm. You, you got to shoot for that, you know. And things happen, you know, injuries happen, stuff like that. But I mean, it's hard to let go of that dream, but it, it's, you know, I, I am happy when I'm out here. I, I, I enjoy teaching, I enjoy coaching, and, you know, I wouldn't want to change it. Uh, what is your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Um, I am also a pretty avid uh, video game player. Um, I play Xbox, I, I uh, kind of all over the place. I do sports games, I do, you know, I do Madden leagues and tourneys, I do, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto, all that kind of stuff, Halo. Um, you know, and then I, I like just following my son around, taking him to, you know, he, he's a multi-sport athlete too, and just taking him around, watching him play. Um, you know, just all that kind of stuff. Just kind of, I just like to stay active, really, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you were a millionaire, how would you spend your money? Oh, man. You know, I think I would probably, you know, typical answer, you know, take care of your parents. I think that's that's one of your first things, but then uh, you know, put my wife somewhere. You know, I mean, we already have a pretty big house, but I you know, make sure she didn't have to work and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't think I would quit my job. You know, I, I think, like I said, I, I like to have a little purpose there. Um, but you know, I don't think I'd blow it. I, I think I'd save it back. Um, maybe you know, increase a little bit of little stuff there, but. <laughs> Put a little bit into the stock market, you know. Probably do that, yeah. Well, you'll get your money back. Uh, what is your favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? Um, I think I really like Thanksgiving. 
I, I like all the food, all the, the family together, you know, and really our, our Christmases are kind of like our Thanksgiving in terms of that, you know, we always get together like that, but you know, there, there's always a, the presents that are kind of a distraction, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think Thanksgiving is a little more wholesome, a little more, uh, and obviously, you know, the food. So I think my favorite holiday would just be my birthday, mostly because me and my mom share a birthday. Oh, really? So I was born, I was her birthday gift. Oh man. I was just, yeah, I wasn't supposed to be due until like a month or so later, but yeah. hey, I just popped out on her birthday. <laughs> I was like, surprise. That's awesome. So that is it for this section of our sports review and back to you guys. Mr. Dave seems like a pretty cool guy. I'm excited to see where he takes the baseball team this year. Yeah, he's a great business teacher. He really makes sure we're understanding what's going on, so I'm sure he does the same with baseball. Bonus, Bonus feature. feature! Pike Central's Ag Program recently hosted their annual Ag Extravaganza. Sixth through eighth grade attended the event to learn about the Ag Program while meeting some of the animals that they brought along. They also held a hay bale throwing contest had tours of the greenhouse, and an activity teaching how to properly plant seeds. If you're interested in becoming an ag student, you can email or talk to Mr. Clumford. Even if you're not familiar with agriculture, don't be afraid to try something new. Talk to Mr. Clumper about more details. We have Raven Shots at the Elmer Book Center with Mr. Yoder, making some s'mores check mix. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Pike Center Broadcasting. I'm Raven Shots, and today I'm joined by... Mr. Yoder. Hello. Um, today... We are going to be making s'mores money buddies or puppy chow. Um, I actually just recently learned that another name for puppy chow is muddy buddies. Never knew that either. I heard it, but didn't know what they were talking about. So yeah. So your ingredients for today will be golden graham cereal, Chex Mix cereal, or just any kind of off-brand Chex. Um, we don't have golden grams, but we do have a cinnamon toast like cereal. Um, powdered sugar, peanut butter, chocolate chips, and mini marshmallows. Um, we will have all of the ingredients and the amounts needed down below. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is combine four cups of your graham cereal and three cups of your chuck cereal into a large bowl, which we have already done. You will then want to get one cup of powdered sugar and place that into a large baggie, which I believe we have... Yeah, right there. Then once you do that, you can get onto the actual cooking um, and combine one cup of chocolate chips and a half cup of peanut butter into a microwavable bowl. You will microwave first for 30 seconds and mix it, then microwave for another 30 seconds and mix once again. If there are still some chunks of chocolate or your peanut butter isn't completely completely melted, you can um, microwave for another 30 seconds. So we microwaved ours. It, for us, took a total of three 30-second times, so about 90 seconds. So that may be the thing that it does for you, or it may be just because we used different kind of chocolate chips. Um, but now that you have done that, you will want to get a cup of mini marshmallows and mix it in with your chocolate peanut butter. Um, and you will want to mix these until the marshmallows are only a little bit melted. So, Mr. Yoder, what are your plans for spring break? Um, on Sunday, I'm going to go to Indianapolis and go watch a play. It's called Pericles by Shakespeare. My dad and me, we like to go and watch plays up in Indianapolis. Uh, it's Garfield Park for free, so if anybody is interested, they're free at the Garfield Theater. But um, then I might go to Kentucky and I might go to Mammoth Cave there at some point. I'm also going to take my um, tests that I have to do to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that on Tuesday and Friday. So be thinking about me. <laughs> How so, about you, Raven? Do you have any plans? So this weekend, actually the start of spring break, I'm going to be getting to test drive the car that I may be getting as my first car. And then near the end of spring break, I'm going to be going and visiting my little siblings. Cool. You're going to have them sunglasses on and put on their jacket, <laughs> the convertible you got, and it pulled down. Uh, if it's warm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it warms up sometimes. Yes, it would be nice. Alright, so now that we have all of our marshmallows mixed in, and they are a little bit melted, um, you will want to pour your chocolate peanut, peanut butter mix over the cereal and mix together 
until it is all completely covered. Who's cooks? I know the pioneer. Martha Stewart. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> think Martha Stewart. The oh. pioneer woman. Yeah. I like walking her. She makes yeah. some good food. All right. I like our kitchen that we have here. Yes, I it's like very the nice. wood on the back. Yeah. Okay. So now that you have gotten that all mixed and a lot of your cereal covered, you're going to want to carefully scoop your chocolate covered cereal into the Ziploc with powdered sugar. So you talk about Mammoth Caves. What all do you know about caves? Um, I've always liked caves since I was probably in third grade. I've just always been fascinated how it's solid rock, but then somehow that water is able to dissolve it and make this space that you can go in. And um, it just kind of, when you're doing like the stalactites and the stalagmites, like, it's just so weird to me. Like, how does water deposit those minerals? And how does it form like that? And it takes hundreds, if not thousands of years. And then you touch it, it can sometimes ruin their growth. It's mm -hmm. just so weird how something takes so long to grow, it's just so delicate. It's made out of stone. Like, it's just really fascinating to me. And I like uh, one of my scarier cave moments was it was this cave and there was a bunch of water like, and you had to walk I had to get up to my neck in the water and it was like freezing cold and it's kind of funny because my mom she had never been caving and they had this little boat for her to ride on so I'm pulling her along in this little boat a chariot and here I'm freezing to death like, that was <laughs> that was a fun memory I had alright now that we have our cereal of the powdered cereal and the bag of powdered sugar. You're going to want to shake the bag until the cereal is completely coated with powdered sugar. Um, <laughs> Alright, now that your cereal is covered in powdered sugar, you're going to want to pour it into another bowl. We're just going to use this bowl. And for your final step, you will want to mix in a remaining one half cup of chocolate chips and three fourth cups of mini marshmallows. This is really nice and Okay. So. Shout out to Mrs. Boner for getting us these awesome. They're very nice. And also, thank you to the JC store for supplying us with all of these wonderful ingredients. Thank you. And the book to center. Thank you for letting us use their amazing kitchen here. Yes. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's just wing it with the marshmallows. Okay. How much do we need? Uh, like three or four cup. Yeah. And now you can mix that together. And there you have it. S'mores, puppy chow, or buddy buddies. I do a little taste test. Yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. Even though you can't see the peanut butter anymore, you can taste it. It's there. 